Hi, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to St. Andrew United Methodist Church. Today is a very exciting day for us as we host our first live benefit concert supporting the storehouse of Collin County. My name is Jonathan Gregoire, and I'm the executive director of the Arts Foundation of St. Andrew, with our mission enriching spirituality through the power of the arts. Now, we support all kinds of arts here at the foundation, uh, from visual arts, performing arts, literary arts, as well as arts education. Um, but today, we're really focused on community arts as how we come together as a community. You know, Victor Hugo has a quote that he says, music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent. We're here today because it's impossible to be silent about the effects that we're feeling from COVID-19. Today is Giving Tuesday Now. It's recognized internationally um, as a day where we come together to be able to support those who have been impacted uh, through this illness. On Giving Tuesday Now's webpage, they say this, generosity has the power to unite and heal communities in good times and bad. This virus impacts every person on the planet and it presents an opportunity to come together as a global community. Music connects us, and that gives us a chance to come together as a community through music and through the arts. All of the artists that you're about to hear today and see today are generously giving of their time, but it's the Arts Foundation that wants to be able to support our community. These people have become like family to us, and we work with them throughout the year, and artists have felt the own impact of this through canceled events and engagements. And so we're having a chance to honor them and support that relationship by being here. But as they're giving of their time, we're also raising awareness for the need um, for food that's been created through this. And so with that, we've partnered with the Storehouse of Collin County to be able to raise awareness for them. Dame Julie Andrews says, feed the body food and drink, it will survive today. Feed the soul art and music, it will live forever. But what we're trying to do today is both, both be able to feed the soul and the spirit and provide food for those in need. Now today is quasi-telethon inspired and you'll notice the giving link either through Facebook as well as um, on our Arts Foundation webpage, strandrewumc.org arts. Already to date, um, at the start of this, we have had seven generous gifts totaling $1,194.65. That's already amazing, and your generosity means so much to us because just one dollar provides three meals. And that's a statistic we're going to con continue to drive home, no matter how much you can give during this time, because I know we are all feeling the impact of this. Just a dollar provides somebody else three meals. That's incredible. And so already we've provided over 3,300 meals. How fantastic today. Now, in this first set, uh, you're going to be hearing our friends Imperial Brass, Today is also Cinco de Mayo, and as a result of that, they'll start with Besame Mucho uh, by the great uh, Mexican artist Consuelo Velasquez, who wrote this when she was just 16 years old. We'll continue in that theme and be able to hear Argentinian composer uh, Astro Piazzolla in his Liber Tango, a tango for freedom. And then finally, as a chance for us to already be able to say thank you to you all and tell you how grand we think you are, They'll sing the great hit made famous by the Andrew sisters, by mere bist du schön. Take it away, Imperial Brass. <laughs> Thank you. 
to such a great start this morning with wonderful music. Thank you for being here as part of today. I'm joined now with Candace Winslow, the Executive Director of the Storehouse of Collin County, for whom today's benefit concert is supporting. Now, Candace, tell us a little bit about the need that's happening right now. Uh, it's my honor to do so, Jonathan, but first, before I tell you that, can I just thank the Arts Foundation so very much for honoring us and raising awareness and funds for us today. We are forever indebted to you, to St. Andrew, and to the musicians that are feeding our souls today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Since we um, have come into this crisis, uh, we have seen our need almost triple in our food pantry, which is called Seven Loaves. So before COVID hit, uh, generally speaking, we would serve about 125 households every time our pantry opened on Thursdays and Saturdays. Um, to date, we are now seeing numbers of between 250 and 325 households every time we've opened. So the need without question has increased. Now, who all are you serving yeah. at this time? What is your general demographic? Yeah, so right now we are serving anyone who finds themselves in our food line. Uh, before COVID, we were proud to serve in Collin County and that was our service boundary, if you will. But now we are serving people as far away from Irving, uh, Garland, outside of the county. And probably one of the things that has made one of the greatest impressions upon me is that in our food line, we find neighbors that are in their work uniforms. And those uniforms are fast food restaurant uniforms, chain restaurant uniforms, deliver delivery service uniforms, which demonstrates to me that people are really in a place of need even when they have employment. Everyone has been uh, impacted in such a, an incredible way. Yeah. Now, uh, moving ahead, it, all of this is behind us. What do you see happening next? Yeah. Yeah. How will you all be able to continue serving the community? So when COVID hit, a term that struck me in media was this concept of echo crisis, mm -hmm. meaning what would happen because of COVID once the virus had kind of, if you will, lost its novelty. And for us at the storehouse, what we know is that our neighbors that we serve are going to be holding on to crises well past shelter in place being over. And what I mean by that is what the crisis has done for them in terms of their employment, in terms of their foundational security, Security, all of that has been shaken at its core. Yeah. And so what we believe at the storehouse is no longer will we be serving 125 households uh, when we open post COVID, if you will, we're gonna be serving 200, 250. Yeah. So the need to have partners that are willing to stand beside us, not only today, Jonathan, but well into the remaining days of 2020 is yeah. vital for our success. Now, how are people able to be safe during this time when they come to get food? Oh, what does you. your process look like? Thank you for asking that. So immediately um, when COVID hit, we felt um, an incredible responsibility for the safety of our neighbors and our volunteers because we could not do our work without our volunteers. Currently, our neighbors are being served in an outside walk-up model with six feet of social distancing like we're doing now, um, with all of our staff wearing masks, gloves, and sanitizing the tables in which the food, are, the food is seated on every time we serve. And we've also asked our dedicated volunteers to hold back until we are kind of past the peak of the crisis. And we are blessed at the storehouse to have some incredible staff that are carrying the service uh, uh, opportunity during this time. Well, thank you for putting yourself in a position where you're at the front lines thank as you. well with all of these other people to help ensure that people have food thank during you. this time. How can people find more information if they're interested? Sure. Well, um, our website, thestorehousecc.org, has a page dedicated to COVID and how we're responding. It tells all about our programs, not just our food pantry, Seven Loaves, but our closed closet, Joseph's Coat, and our relational ministry for women, Project Hope. So I hope that uh, the viewers today would look at our website. Um, I hope you would consider giving a gift that will serve our neighbor so well. And again, Jonathan, to you and to the entire foundation, to all the incredible musicians, to the artists of today, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're touched. Thank you, Candace. Well, this means a lot for us to be able to help you all uh, during this time. One dollar provides three meals. Um, that's an incredible statistic. And so your generosity today through various forms of giving, whether it's through our fundraising page with the Arts Foundation as part of this benefit concert or directly to the storehouse is helping ensure that nobody needs to go without food right now. So we thank you so thank much you. for your time. Now in this next set, uh, you'll get to hear Yumiko play a wonderfully, fiendishly difficult uh, etude de concert for harp called Au Matin, To the Morning. Uh, before that, I'll continue with the concert pieces um, and play a bolero de concert um, by another French composer so you can hear the magnificent Letourneau pipe organ. But to start, our favorite ladies of liberty, 
uh, will be telling you just how much they love you. Because as one other quote I have, Marc Chagall says, art must be an expression of love or it is nothing. And it's our hope today and during this time that you continue to feel the love from the musicians, from the Arts Foundation, from the storehouse, to know that you are loved and cared for. Take it away, ladies. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a barrel and a heap, a barrel and a heap, and I'm talking in my sleep about you, about you. I love you, a bushel and a peck, you bet your pretty neck I do. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, though it makes my heart a wreck. It makes my heart a wreck, yes, it makes my life a mess, it makes my life a mess. Oh, a mess of happiness about you, about you. I love you, a bushel and a peg, you better put it in a do. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, though it beats me all the heck, it beats me all the heck, how I'll never tend the farm, never tend the farm when I want to keep my arm about you, about you. I love you, a bushel and a peck, you bet your pretty neck I do.
for that beautiful performance. So wonderful to be with you all today. We are about halfway through our live performance, and at 10.20, we had raised $1,632.03 in a total of 11 gifts. There are lots of ways to be able to give. Make sure to check out our webpage, strandrewumc.org arts, to be able to give to the storehouse through this fundraising event. If you're watching this at a later time, make sure that you know that you can still give. Uh, and $1 provides three meals. Now I'm joined right now with both uh, Reverend Arthur Jones and Reverend Robert Hasley, um, senior pastors here at St. Andrew. Now Robert started St. Andrew 30 years ago in humble beginnings in a school cafeteria that has grown into this magnificent place. And the culture here at St. Andrew, for those of you who were perhaps unfamiliar, is one of heart, is very much one of love and a commitment to community. Now, something like the storehouse, Robert, was began about 10 years ago by your wife, Sharon Hasley, with a commitment to feeding our neighbors. Yes, and it was actually begun here in the sanctuary. With, uh, it, it was filled with people who were uh, contributing to the North Dallas uh, Food Bank. And uh, so that made a <laughs> significant impact uh, on our church, that we had that opportunity to help the community. Yeah. And so since then, we've uh, supported uh, storehouse ministry. That's so wonderful. Now, Arthur, can you tell us a little bit about the commitment to community that St. Andrew has? Well, it's part of our core identity. It's part of the community and the culture that was yeah. began 35 years ago. One of the first things that happened before they even have a, had a building was St. Andrew started a, a program, an after-school program for kids here in Collin County. Uh, we have been active in uh, Katrina efforts. We have been active uh, even just uh, outside of the storehouse. We've been feeding first responders in this time. It is part of our, our fundamental call. Is that in fact, if you tune in this weekend, we'll be talking about the need for the early church along with the church today to provide both physical and spiritual food for the community. And both of those things are critical. Uh, and I'll tell you, Jonathan, it has been a balm for my soul to actually hear the music that has been in here uh, because it is, uh, we all need both the spiritual food, but we also need the physical food. And this is a place where we've been committed to do both. And we're really excited about our partnership with the storehouse started by Sharon Hasley uh, and some others, but that has recently been taken to new heights. Well, wow, it's so wonderful to have you both here. Now, commitment to the arts is also something that St. Andrew has long believed. Uh, when this space was built, the magnificent organ that went in, the Arts Foundation is something new that we've started this year. Can you tell us a little bit about St. Andrew's commitment to supporting the arts here? 
Well, if you uh, even see our building or drive by, one of the first things people notice is that we care about uh, making things beautiful. We believe that God made the world good, and we are trying to create on this spot a place where the kingdom of heaven is made real here on earth. And that is that involves beauty of uh, visually and musically, that God gave us all the senses, uh, and that God wants us to enjoy them. And it has been a privilege for us to be able to enjoy that and see the, the foundation for the arts uh, come to new heights. And I think this is a perfect way to, to kind of have our new launch, I suppose, in 2020, uh, is combining it with the, the storehouse. And so all of that is a commitment to who we believe that God has called us to be. Well, thank you both for your bold visioning. You're yes, welcome. Robert. Oh, uh, I was just simply going to say, <laughs> the early church was the epicenter of music and the arts. Yes. And so uh, you have done a phenomenal job of recapturing that well, for St. Andrew. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, we support the arts in a lot of ways here, and as they mentioned, we support visual arts. And now we're going across to the other side of the sanctuary, where during this time, we've had Krista Miller painting uh, a work of art for us that will be auctioned off at the end. Uh, make sure to email us for details about that. Krista, I'll talk to you a minute from over here <laughs> until I can move to the other side. The joys of live TV, everyone. <laughs> now, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the piece you're working on today for us? Sure. So... Um... As I was thinking about it, I uh, was trying to think of what generosity and giving um, would look like on a canvas. Um, and so I am an expressionist, um, and so when it comes to art, I really kind of dig down a little bit and just, you know, try and interpret something the way I see it, but th hopefully the way other people see it as well. Um, I think that's, that is what art is. I mean, yeah. it's what visual art is, um, is... I love the way that artists um, can take something and then interpret it onto a canvas as the unseen. Yeah. Um, and so uh, so my heart for this um, was gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to convey what gratitude was for somebody who was receiving um, and just the joy and the love that comes from that. So um, and so this piece hopefully will, um, once I'm done, will reflect that um, and, and uh, other people will be able to see joy and love and gratitude in this piece. So, so beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here yeah. for this. Can you tell us a little bit about your style, some of the materials that you're using? Sure. So I paint with acrylic, um, and I do a lot of palette knife work, um, some brush work as well, um, and gold leaf, silver leaf. I love texture. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you'll find a lot of that um, in my artwork. Um, but yeah, I use all different kinds of materials. I um, sort of mixed media style. So. Yeah. Um, this one a lot will just be uh, acrylic, and I have some pastels in there as well. So I love that. Now, you've talked about this piece being about gratitude. Do you have a particular artist philosophy that you live by when painting? Um, so I guess what I, I would say is I, I love to paint from my bones, mm, um, paint from yeah. the soul, because that's, if you paint from that space and those heart corners, and I yeah. say heart corners a yeah. lot, um, but if you paint from that space, yes. um, the canvas is um, is, is just going to reflect that. Yeah. Um, I think it's the, just the truest form of yeah. art. It's just painting from deep within. Um, and so I tell a lot of my students that and when, if, if I'm teaching, um, just to paint from your bones. What are your bones telling you right now? Yeah. Um, and so, and I think it goes along with art therapy and, and everything, working through emotion. And that's how I started painting. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's so great to hear, you know, I know as a musician, I try to imbue the same feelings mm -hmm. into my music making. And so, yeah. so wonderful to hear that, of course, that's the same for your artistic medium. Yeah. And it's just a different output. Um, but what a visual, beautiful visual representation yeah. we're able to have of that. Thank you Thank for being you. here today. I'm so happy to be here. Great. Yeah. <laughs> we will let you keep working. Yeah. <laughs> and I will tell you all about our final set that we have here for today. Uh, we'll close the program with a piece which won't need any introduction um, from Martha, who will be here playing violin. And I know you'll look forward to that. Immediately before that, though, we're going to get a chance to see how visual arts and music pair together. Joaquin Aguilar has prepared a beautiful presentation um, of a video that accompanies Massenet's uh, meditation from Thais uh, that really tells a story. And it's amazing to me how art and music, when combined together, create something which is so much bigger than even them individually. And so I hope you'll enjoy that chance together. Um, immediately before that, we'll get to hear Lusik and Megan sing a lovely duet from uh, Hansel and Gretel by Humperdinck, The Evening Prayer. Um, and in that, it talks about how an angel comes with peace and love to give happy dreams. 
And it's our hope during this time that you feel that peace and love and that this might be an escape and a chance for happy dreams, even in midst of whatever struggle you might be feeling right now. Before that, we're going to get a chance to hear some literary arts. Michael Agnew has written an exceptionally powerful spoken word for us that he'll deliver um, about the power of the arts, about how we're created to create. But first, we have two of our own St. Andrew students here with us to sing uh, probably the most famous duet from Aladdin about a whole new world. You know, as arts provide comfort and nourishment for your soul, um, the text talks about how in a whole new world right now, there are new horizons to pursue, a world where our hearts can decide, that we can decide that no one needs to feel alone right now, that no one needs to go without food. And so your generous gifts are allowing to make sure that people have food, that we don't have to live in fear during this time. And so I hope you'll enjoy all of this music. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride. point of view no one to tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming a whole new world a dazzling place I never knew but when I'm way up here it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with now you. I'm in a whole new It's better. I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far. I can't go back to where I used to be. Every turn is a With new horizons Every to pursue. Every moment red letter. I'll, I'll chase, chase them anywhere. There's, There's time to spare. Let me share this whole new We were, created by, we were created by the creative creator, the originator of all art and beauty, beginning with speaking existence into galaxies, weaving words like tapestries, to forming man from dust, he sculpted and molded each one of us. With the world as his blank canvas, he made it beautiful, alive and musical, flowing and fruitful, intricately wonderful. That is why art is the foundation of the world. Because as created creatures, whenever we create art, we reflect something innate in who we are. Art, art allows us to feel with our eyes and hear with our hearts. Like how when God painted the skies with the stars, we create beauty whenever we put on display what is ours. Art expands past time and, and location. It connects us all through our shared imagination. It gets passed on through generation after generation, through verbal and nonverbal communication. Art is the heartbeat of society. It, art pushes us to dream bigger than our realities. It comes in many different varieties, through eighth notes and brush strokes, through harmonies and melodies, through metaphors and, 
and vocal cords through poetry and photography, all of these consist of one common thread. An artist using their tools to create an extension of them, which then extends past space and time as their artistic expression ruminates in our minds. That is why I can hear Bach's composition for the 20th time and still feel his heart intertwine with mine. Because whenever you create something that had no form and given meaning, Whenever you see what could be and shape it into being, you create possibilities and dreams and hopes that life is more than it seems. You create change, small shifts that cause the world to reframe. You create joy and happiness in it. In the depression of life, art brings beauty to the darkness. You create an empowering confidence that every voice matters and everyone is an artist. We were all a blank canvas that became a masterpiece crafted with purpose and thought. And now the masterpiece becomes an artist to make art that reflects our God, for he is beauty. And whenever we make beautiful things, he is praised. That is why art is the foundation of the world, because the world was made by his name. So don't be afraid to create. For we are all artists, whether we think it or not. Art isn't meant for the 1%. It's meant to reflect our love for our God. So make art. Make beautiful things. For when you do, the world is changed. I shot the children's peace. Oh, 
There's a famous quote by Hans Christian Andersen that says, where words fail, music speaks. That's the purpose of today, to be able to speak that which we can't otherwise be able to name with words. A prayer for a whole new world where troubles melt away like lemon drops. That's what our wish is, a place where people don't have to be in fear, where we're able to not have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. And today we've been focused on being able to raise awareness for that specific need in our partnership with the storehouse. Now, as of 10.50 this morning, 10 minutes ago, we had over 28 donations totaling $2,895.72. It's remarkable. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. I want to make sure to be able to bring up Candice and Robert and Arthur so that together we can express our thanks to you for being here as part of this support. As they're walking up, I want to make sure to be able to say thank you to all of the artists that have been here today, but a special thanks as well to all of the artists that you don't see that have been working tirelessly behind the cameras to help make this event even possible. And to all of you who have been working the cameras and the lights and the sound 
an extremely humble and grateful thank you um, for all of your work today. It's been our privilege to be able to celebrate uh, the storehouse today, uh, uh, Director Winslow. Uh, uh, it really is our privilege to be able to, uh, to partner with you and really it is the part of our campus that is most used at the moment because we were able to finish the construction just in time for, uh, for well, COVID. And so we are deeply honored and grateful to be able to celebrate you uh, and to continue the work that we've been doing. And uh, thank you, Jonathan, for reminding us that we've been put on this earth not to be served, but to serve. And my thanks to not only St. Andrew, to the history of St. Andrew to the 11 years ago, Sharon Hasley having the idea that our neighbors needed to be loved just as Jesus loves us. And Jonathan, to you for your heart, for your generosity, for your organization, and for the God-given talent that you have, I say thank you. And for all the musicians, for those behind the camera, the fact that all of you will come alongside and serve our neighbors in the food line, to those that have contributed and to those that are watching, thank you, thank you, thank you. We could not do our work without the partnerships that we have. God bless you all. I wanna close with words that Michael spoke during his spoken word, because these really hit home for me. Because whenever you create something that had no form and give it meaning, when you see what could be and shape it into being, you create possibility and dreams and hope that life is more than it seems. You create change, small shifts that cause the world to reframe. You create joy and happiness in the depression of life. Art brings beauty to the darkness. You create an over-empowering confidence that every voice matters and everyone is an artist. And that's what we've proven here today, that everyone matters and no one should go without food. Thank you for being here. I hope this has provided some solace for your spirit as we fed both soul and body. Have a wonderful day.